Are you getting ready to change your oil on your 1500 but not sure what to do? Then watch this video. Welcome back. Today we got a gold wing video for you today. It's been a long time since I've done any. And now we've got a whole set of series for gold wing repairs. So today's video is going to be how to change your oil on your GL1500. Now some of you probably already know how to do this. This is real simple, real easy. For you newcomers out there, it's not very hard, but want to do it yourself. I'll be here to show you step by step how we're going to change oil. There's nothing to it. It's real easy. And this will save you a lot of money from taking it to the garage or to the Honda shop or wherever you take it. So, get ready. Now first, let's look and see what we're using. Okay, first let me show you that I have my official Honda manual with me. And no, I don't really need it to change oil. But it had some good illustrations here that I wanted to show you and share. Mainly this oil velocity chart right there. As you can see. Alright, you can see the different weights. I'm going to be using a 10W40. A lot of people use 2050, and there's nothing wrong with that. It exactly definitely fits into the um, the temperature range here for Texas. It very rarely ever gets down to zero, if that. I don't think I've ever seen it. And it goes all the way up past 100, which is about right. I just like the 10W40 one because it's a lighter weight or oil, and it can do a whole lot more range of functions of down to below negative 10 which I hope it never gets that cold here in Texas all the way past 100 like 2050 and it basically costs the same and also by having a little lighter weight oil than the 2050 I'll be getting a little bit better fuel mileage not a whole lot but just a little bit better all right so let's show you what I'm using here today I'm going to be using the mobile one 10w40 synthetic and a cane in filter here and I'll, let me explain why I use this stuff. And now, first off, I need to say I'm not being paid or sponsored to use their products or anything. I use these products because I trust the products. I've been using them for years. They've never let me down. Yeah, they're a little bit expensive, but I think in the long run, it's a little bit worth it. All right. I've always used Mobile One since, oh, ever since I started working on cars. My dad's always used it. Always was good. I've used it. It's great. I do use, um, you know, regular pins oil or cheap oil for the lawnmowers and tractors and stuff. But for my good vehicles, you know, the Go Wings, the trucks, and the Mustang, I go with Mobile One. And I got fully synthetic. I'm a firm believer in synthetic oil. It reduces the friction, and that's why the oil lasts longer. And I think overall it's a better oil for the engine to help it, you know, if you're going to keep it for a long time, which I plan to. All right. Now for the K&N filter, there's not too many particular reasons why I like them, other than they got a thick, you know, they got a better, um, as you can see, cartridge type uh, filtering. It's a little bit better than some of your standard ones, but the big plus is that one, that little nut right there that you can wrench off. Honestly, you wouldn't believe how many times I've worked on cars where the oil filter is such in a hard place, you can't get a strap or you can't get nothing, and but you can fit that nut on there and voila comes right off all you gotta do is break a freed and you get it by hand so i kind of like these now on the gold wing you don't really need to worry about this but i picked this one up because i wanted to use a little bit better fuel uh filter since i was using synthetic now when i pull off my other one which is a wix filter i'll give you guys the number for that so you know if you want a wix filter what number that will be all right now for the last thing here is i have some marvin mr oil here and i do like to mix this in with my oil a little bit and you can and they have a chart on here. You have to pull that little tab out and it tells you how much. It's one quart per five quarts or whatever for every whatever. So um, we're not quite five quarts on this thing. So I got a little bit less. But you need to do your calculation so you know how much to put in so it's not too much. But I've always put that stuff in all my vehicles. My Ranger, my Diesel, and now the Mustang. And I've never had any problems. And honestly, it's probably made it better it really does it's like a good little cleaner type and lubricate you know it's just a really good stuff this stuff is good 
I use it for practically everything almost. So I always mix it in now. You don't have to do that. That's just me right there. So if you want to just, you know, X that out, that's more than fine. You, you guys do what you want. But right now, this is why I'm using these products because I'm sure I'm going to get tons of questions about why am I using synthetic or 10W40 or whatever. But, you know, even in the Honda book here, it did say that right there. Honda four-stroke oil or equivalent AP cert, SF, you know, blah, 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 all the way to 1040. So they really recommend the 1040 and everything. So that's not a bad deal. So that's why I went with the 1040. And I use this in my KZ too, the exact same oil, and I had no problems with it. So, all right, guys, I think that is enough about oils and filters and more oils. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is warm up the bike if you haven't drove it already. We're just going to run it for a few minutes, so I'm just going to turn my choke on, turn the key on, and let her rip. Now you're just going to run this for a few minutes and shut her off. We don't want to get it too hot, otherwise it would be unbearable to work in. Okay, once you let the um, bike warmed up a little bit, let's go ahead and take off this front shield right here. Now it's got three screws holding it in and there's one down in here right where my finger is let me bring the camera over a little bit and you can i'll zoom in on where that last one is you can see where that little square groove is this right there there's one in the middle and then there's one on the other side of the same place you may have to move the wheel a little bit to get it off so uh I'm going to go ahead and get that off, and you guys can watch me struggle there for a little bit. Now the main reason why you take the shield off is mainly to get to this oil filter right here. Now some people can probably do it without taking the shielding off. If they can probably get their hand in there and back it out if it's loose enough. But we're going to do it the correct way. Or at least the way that Honda suggests. And that is to take off the front shield so you can get to this. Now I'm going to go ahead and drain the oil here. I'll go get my wrench here in a minute and we'll take the oil filter off. So let me go get that. Okay guys, we're underneath the bike. I couldn't get my tripod to go this low, so I'm gonna have to do this by hand here. But I'm gonna show you where the old drain plug is. If you look, that little plug right there, blah, right there is your oil drain plug. And it is a 17 millimeter. All right. Now this thing is being stubborn and being definitely a hard plug. I might have to tap it. Oh, finally with a little persuasion it comes off or it gets loose all right before it gets loose let's put the paint underneath there yeah. all right I'm gonna go ahead and take this cover off so it can vent I hope it doesn't drip you know I'm gonna put it over here so it doesn't drip oil on me all right let's go ahead and take the plug off if I can stick my hands in there. And, oh, there she goes. Look at that. Didn't even get a drop on. Oh, dang. One little drop. Okay. Well, let's let that drain there for a little bit and see what we got. Okay, while we're letting the oil drain, let's look at our plug here and make sure it's still good. All right, now the book says that the washer is in good shape, which it does. You can reuse. All right, now some people change these all the time, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's no right or wrong way. But this looks good. Okay, now that we got it out to a dribble here, I'm going to go ahead and put the plug back in. Now, some people wait a while, you know, which is fine. But I think we pretty much got most of it out here. So I'm going to go ahead and put the plug back in. All right, then we'll get the filter off. Hello. All right. Okay, now we got a wrench. Tighten it up pretty good. <clears throat> Not too tight, but good enough. All right, that's on. Let's move on. Okay, now we're going to try the oil filter. I'm going to see if I can get this off by hand. 
No. Oh, no, yeah, no, I'm not no He-Man. All right, time to bring out the big boys. Now, there is a special tool you can buy to take these filter wrenches off. Or you can be like me and use these good old channel locks here. Because all we want to do is just break it free. I'm trying to do this live here. Oh, okay. This thing was on there. Just enough where we can get it by hand. And honestly, we don't care if we tear up the filter because we're going to throw it away anyway. I mean, recycle it. Let's see if I can get it off button. Ah, there we go. All right. And there it comes oil. Make sure you have your pan underneath. And it dropped off. Yay. Okay. Let's let that drain for a little bit. All right, guys. Here's the Wix filter. In case you want to know the number, it is 51356. Okay. All right. That's your Wix. Now, the other thing we need to check while we have it here is we need to make sure that the old ring is still on here, which it is. So we're good. Because these things will stick. All right, I've had it happen once, and I'm mainly on that Mustang. Okay, when you put on the other filter here, we got the K&N filter. It's uh, KN303. You can go to their website to make sure it's the right one for your bike. All right, now before we put it on, now I'm going to do something that a lot of people don't do. And whether you do this or not, it won't change anything. But I've always put some oil inside the filter before putting it on the bike or on the vehicle. I always fill up the oil filter a little bit. And everything. It's just something that we've always, my family's always done. It's my father showed me how to do it. His father showed him how to do it. And it's so on, so on back. But anyway, we always fill them up a little bit. Or try to fill them up all the way there so they're already got oil in them. Now, I'm not going to fill this thing all the way up because it's got to go at a um, complete, you know, 90 there. So that's going to make it a little bit hard to get. So I'm not going to put it, fill it up all the way because I don't want to spill any. Now I'm shaking it to get all the air bubbles out so that it'll work its way down and as you can see it's gone about half halfway so I'm going to give it a little bit more. And I always like to make this a game and see how much I can get in, you know, spin on and not make a mess. And there I am. I'm going to probably put too much in there again. Alright, that should be about good. I'm going to shake it down a little bit. And now we're going to take some of that oil with a clean finger, you know, grab or grab and put around the oil ring. There we go. That way it'll make a nice good seal. So now you guys get to watch me put this on here. All right, did not spill. All right, now you want to get this hand tighten. Just hand tighten. Don't do anything else. We're not. That's. Ugh. Get as tight as you can with your hand. Once you've got that, you're good to go. All right, for right now, go ahead and leave your shield off, all right? We're going to put oil in the bike here, and we want to test it, and we want to make sure there's no leaks. Once we're done with that, we're going to put the shield back on. Okay, we're on the right side of the bike here, and we are going to be taking off these two plastics right here, this and this. All right, so we can get to our dipstick and our oil uh, filler tube. All right, that comes off, so put those off to the side. It goes off nice and easy. All right, right here is your dipstick. All right, it just turns out. And this right here is where you fill in the oil. So we're going to go ahead and take that off. All right, we'll grab a funnel, and we're going to fill her up. Right. I like to use transmission funnels. Make it real nice and easy to go in there. Make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, I just got done putting in about two and a half quarts. All right, I'm going to put another half quart in there and then we're going to check it. The book says that the bike holds about 3.9 quarts. All right. So remember, when you drain the oil, you're not going to get all the oil out there. And I think that 3.9 is pretty much what it holds when it's all empty. It's, it's going to be close to 3.9, but not quite. All right. 
So when you drain your oil, not all the oil comes out. No matter how long you let it sit, there's still going to be oil, old oil in your engine. It's just impossible to get it all out. All right, so what I do is that I'll put in the three quarts, and I will check the dipstick, and then I will see where I'm at, and I will just pour accordingly until I hit my upper mark. Now, I do this the same way with my cars or whatever. I put in about, you know, if it's five and something quarts, I'll put in the five quarts or put in the four and then start checking it and then start putting in a little bit at a time until it comes out right. Of course, you got to remember, if you didn't fill up your oil filter, it will go down after you start it up, so we'll have to check it after we run it for a little bit, after all the oil has been circulated and it works its way back down. Or there is what some people do, and I've seen this done multiple times, it'll just stuff four quarts in there, and it'll be just hunky-dory. In fact, the last time I um, changed oil in this, I had some people help me, and they just dumped four quarts in it, and it seemed to be just fine. It was above the line, it didn't hurt it. If you're above the line on this, it won't hurt it. It'll be just fine, as long as you're not too far above the line. I mean, but as long as you're within the stick, you know, the little flat part, I think you'll be okay. Pretty much but if you are a little bit above the line don't fret it's okay it's a little more it doesn't hurt these things all right I guess now that that's done we'll go ahead and get put in some more oil all right <laughs> never check your dipstick the first time you pull it out now if you don't know how to check your oil properly on a gold wing. I got a video down in the description that shows you how to properly check your oil. But these ain't like your normal cars a little bit. There's a little bit of difference. See? They're bad. Once you pull them out to check it, you don't screw it back in. You just set it and pull it out and check it. All right, what we're about to do. All right, and you can see they're almost there at the mark there almost there actually we just need a little bit more all right awesome so i'm gonna wipe this off put it back in and just put a little bit more oil back in into it all right there we are right above the line that's pretty good okay now that we get that back on we're gonna crank it up let it run for a little bit and then we're just gonna let the oil drain back down after we shut it off and then we're gonna check oil again and see what we need to do if we need to add anything or not because it probably will go down to fill up the oil filter or it may so let's see what it does okay let's crank it I don't think I need to choke it since we already ran it let's give it a good start we're just gonna let it run for a few minutes and then we'll let it cool down and let the oil drain back down and then see what we got also, while we got it running, check for leaks. Make sure there's nothing leaking. Okay, now that we've let the bike run for a few minutes and let it cool down, we're going to check the oil here. All right. Pull the dipstick out. Wipe it off. All right. Now we're just going to stick it in there, but don't screw it in. And then we're going to pull it out and see what we got. All right, shows we're just a little bit low now. All right, so we just need to add a little bit left in there. Okay. We'll have to add some in there. Okay, we're just going to do a little at a time until we get it right. Okay, we're just a little above the line. So add a little too much. That's fine. It'll be perfect. So we're just going to live with that. Now we'll come back and check it about a week later after we've been driving it for a little bit and make sure that it's still good. Still good to go. So let's get that back on and wrap this baby up. Once you got your oil checked and everything looks good, we can start putting this thing up. We'll start putting our plastics back on. Make sure that you got your tab and your tabs that go into the certain slots here. So make sure they go in. Put our front shroud on there all right we're about to put our shroud on so when you're putting it on make sure that you get everything back into the correct holes here these little 
reels tid stick out on the side shields make sure you get them all correct and laid in so i'm going to put this on and we're going to screw it back on last thing before we call it quits for the day we need to make sure we dispose of our oil properly as you can see here I'm going to put into the one gallon jug and I will be digging into my auto parts store to be disposed of properly and they also take filters they should take filters there all right guys that's how you do it. that's how you change oil on a GL 1500 not very hard pretty simple and everything so I end up totally using three point three and a half quarts it's a little bit smaller like I said in the 3.9 is because um, there's still oil in the um, engine whenever you um, drain it there's still a little bit of residue you know still a little bit left in there just a little but that's no big deal all right so that's gonna end the first segment here of our GL 1500 maintenance our next segment will be uh, probably front brakes we'll also be doing rear brakes and we'll probably be doing a coolant flush so if that's if those are some of the things you need to see or how it's done and I suggest you subscribe to this channel hit that bell so that way you'll be notified whenever a new one video comes up that you'll be, you'll be able to there and be able to watch it as soon as it comes out there so subscribe to the channel if you haven't described all right guys I'm gonna end the video there it has been fun we got this done there's a little bit more service maintenance to do but I'll probably do that another day and you guys will be there to watch it all right until next time guys you guys stay safe out there